All right, what is up guys? I am so excited for today's video. I have the rare opportunity, at least for me, to taste a product from the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. If you're new here, my name is Cameron. This is Drums and Drams. And if this is not your first time here, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Hit that like button as we get going here. Today we have some really serious I mean serious bourbon to taste. It is the Weeded Mash Bill from Buffalo Trace. And again, part of the antique collection. This is coming in at 124.7 proof. It's an extremely rare whiskey. And usually it should only be about 100 to 120 dollars, but these days on the secondary market, street price for this is probably like 1800 dollars, you know, minimum. I mean, these things are ridiculously marked up. And if you ever see one on a shelf in any store, it's probably gonna be behind a glass case. At that point, it's a museum because you're not gonna be able to afford it. And if you if you can afford it, please buy me one. <laughs> Cause I, I will never ever get a bottle of this or anything in the antique collection because here in Ohio, all of the BTAC stuff, all the pappies and all the rare bottles are part of a state lottery system. And you have basically less than a 1% chance of winning every time one of those lotteries comes around. So uh, I am content with my samples. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to my friend Daniel for this. We're gonna find out today what this extremely rare bourbon is like. And I know some of you out there might say, I'm never gonna get a bottle of this. Why are you reviewing it? Well, I'm not gonna get a bottle either. So I'm just tasting this for fun. If you enjoy it, that's awesome. If you don't enjoy it, that's cool. Leave a nasty comment. Here we go on the nose, WLW 2022. Okay, so I put this thing in uh, what looks to be a fancy glass, and it is kind of fancy because it costs way too much money, but it's called the Ben Ewan glass. And what's special about this glass is that it has a flared lip at the top, and I promise this is not a sponsored ad or anything like that. I'm telling you this because this William LaRue Weller comes off a little bit hot on the nose, like very alcoholic, very ethanol forward. But when you throw it in a glass like this with a flared lip that kind of allows those alcohol vapors to roll off the top, more of the flavor comes out onto the nose and it doesn't feel quite so hot. In this case, it's a good choice because when you put it in a glass like this, you can get into some of the really sweet notes that you might expect from a weeded bourbon that's 12 plus years old, that's coming in at 124.7 proof. There's a lot of orange in here, a lot of clove. So basically like some spiced orange kinds of notes, um, some really nice, just overall dark fruit sweetness that you would expect from Buffalo Trace. Yeah, great vanillas, great kind of big league chew, you, you know, candied grape notes uh, on the lower end of things. Big dose of sweet oak, some nice cherry notes as well. So all in all, super sweet, super fruity. The spices in here are kind of aromatic, and I, I like to refer to them that way when I'm talking about stuff like clove or cardamom or, you know, nutmeg or maybe even like a, like a cinnamon bark as opposed to really sharp candied cinnamon. It's got all of those aromatic spices, but for me, really kind of centering on that spiced orange. And last but not least, I would say that there's a, a really nice kind of chocolate note on the low end of things that blends in with sort of the sweet oak that you get typically on a Buffalo Trace product like this. So with all that said, let's get this thing on the palate now and see what we get, cheers. <laughs> that is very nice. This is a fantastic bourbon. And I've gotta admit to you guys that I've actually already tried this on a previous live stream. And when I tried it on that live stream, I thought that it came off a little bit hot. In this case right now, it, it, coming out of this glass in particular, I am not getting that anymore. I think this whiskey actually has some really nice balance to it. Yes, it's super intense, lots of pepper hanging out on the palate right now, a very, very long finish. But I thought that some of the uh, alcohol forward nature of the whiskey kind of masked or clouded a lot of the sweeter notes when I tasted it before. I'm not really getting that right now. And I have been drinking a couple of barrel proofers before I'm recording this video. I just shot some other videos before this. So maybe my palate is kind of primed and ready for it right now. And I think that is important when you're drinking high proof whiskey that you do get your palate ready so that you're not smacked in the face or kicked in the teeth by something, you know, at nearly 125 proof. In this case, I think the balance is spot on. It's super sweet, really long finish. Like I said, I gotta go in for a second sip now. Oh my gosh. If you guys have ever had like a Cinnabon, this tastes like a liquid Cinnabon. It also has a little bit of a sweet tobacco note going on in there too. So what it's kind of opening up into as I continue to sip it 
are even more sweet notes. The Cinnabon goes right along with the kind of aromatic spice, that clove cinnamon note I talked about earlier, a great kind of vanilla icing, and again, that sweet tobacco, which plays nicely with the, the darker notes, like the chocolate, the sweet oak. This is a fantastic whiskey. I can't believe I ever doubted it in the previous tasting on that live stream, whenever it was. But wow, I wish I had a bottle of this. And if you guys have the opportunity to pick up this William the Rue Weller 2022, you know, SRP is great. If you can find it for $120, you're like the, you're the king of the world. That's incredible. I would probably go up to, and I know people are gonna say, don't give a max price. People don't like that, I know, but like, let's be realistic here. You're gonna probably have to overpay for it if you see it anywhere, or if you have to, you know, finagle something with a store owner somewhere. I'm, I'm thinking, 400, 500 bucks tops for this thing. I mean, it is ridiculous. Of course, if you can afford it on secondary, I say, you know, if, if $1,800 is nothing to you and you're used to spending that on a bottle, sure, go ahead and pick one up. That's fine. We all have different financial situations, but uh, this whiskey is just ridiculously good. This truly does taste like just a proofed up Weller 12. That's essentially what it is when it comes down to the stats at least with the 12 year age statement, who knows what goes into the barrel selection and the blending process, I have no clue. But it really does just taste like what you would want a proofed up Weller 12 to be. And I think that's kind of why I like it. It's, it's a little bit darker than previous uh, versions of William LaRue Weller that I've had. I do have a 2016 sample, a little bit of one of those left. I'm not gonna compare it right now, there's no need, but that's a little bit of a brighter profile as compared to the 22. I think they're both equally good. The, the 16 for my palette might be a little bit better, but I think nowadays we're all kind of gravitating towards darker whiskeys, darker, fuller profiles. And this, uh, this 2022 edition really kind of capitalizes on that. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, check out the Patreon. Cheers. Thank you for checking this video out. See you next time here on Drums and Drams.